I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, December 15th with news headlines from Arkansas. But let's start in Kansas. Stories out of Kansas uh, this weekend say that the governor, Sam Brownback, is going to have to come up with $600 million to close a yawning budget deficit. The reason his giant income tax cut. He's not ready to roll back that tax cut yet, although it seems inevitable. He's going to have to spend down reserve funds to, to close the gap. They're going to take money out of preschool education. Schools are on the chopping block. Medicaid may be next. Why do I care about Kansas? Arkansas faces an identical situation. It has $50 million in tax and cuts already scheduled to take place the next two years. Asa Hutchins wants to cut $100 million more. And if he doesn't get the private option renewed, and he hasn't yet said he'll push for it, there are going to be several hundred million more dollars that are going to be missing for Arkansas. Plus, we have Arkansas legislators who want to put more and more people in prison and to make parole harder to get. These things cost money. We can't do it by cutting taxes. Uh, at some point or another, that's going, to, that's going to come clear to the people who are leading the state now. In other legislative news, uh, there's a long list of new anti-abortion bills being planned by the Republican majority legislature. They'll probably pass, and some will probably spawn lawsuits that will get them struck down. They're going to talk about stopping sending money to Planned Parenthood, not for abortion, but to stop the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. They're going to want to have doctors present when women are prescribed pills that can induce an abortion. They want to have doctors present to tell them about the dangers of having an abortion as if women haven't thought about these things. I suggest we have a doctor present when women have sex to tell them about the dangers that can come from being pregnant from having sex, same sort of thing. From Fayetteville, City Attorney Kit Williams has drafted a new civil rights ordinance. He does so reluctantly. He thinks perhaps some time should pass before they try again, given the recent repeal of an ordinance by a close vote after a very tough campaign. But he's moved forward. He's come up with a much cleaner, more narrowly focused ordinance based strictly on the Arkansas civil rights law to apply those same limitations in the civil rights law, but just add it to sexual orientation. He won't cover transgender people. This was a source of some great heat from opponents last time. He will not have a fine penalty for it. There could be a loss of a, a business license for a company that continues to do this incessantly. Uh, it's hard to see how somebody could object to this unless they just really did want to discriminate against gay people. But of course, that's the dirty, not so secret fact of the opposition. They do want to discriminate. Colette Honorable, the chairman of the Arkansas Public Service Commission, is awaiting confirmation of her nomination to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. It's caught up in the last minute mess in the U.S. Senate trying to finish this session of Congress. She may not make it this time. She'll likely be confirmed next time. There's, there's a pretty strong rumor that Republicans from Arkansas are trying to delay Honorable's confirmation until next year so that that seat on the PSC can be filled by Asa Hutchinson and not by Mike Beebe, who otherwise would fill it if she could get confirmed this week. Good news, good news, sorry about that nose, over the weekend for Arkansas Baptist College, the historically black uh, small college, which has been through a great growth period, has had great financial troubles. It got a $30 million loan from the federal government last week that would allow it to pay off all its existing debt, all its existing bills, and substitute a new, much cheaper line of credit, which should get its cash flow in sync and working right if they can keep their enrollment numbers up. That's good news for them. I learned over the weekend about another university's activities, UAMS, that's the University of Arkansas for Medical Science, is uh, doing a branding research project and among that is a survey to test people on how they feel about a new name for the agency. They seem to think a lot of people don't know what UAMS means exactly and they're tossing out the ideas of UA Health or RAR Health. Who knows? We'll see. I know what UAMS means. Uh, also today on the Arkansas blog, I'd urge you to take a look at our story about uh, a session that the uh, women of the Arkansas House had, leaks, had last week on dress code. You perhaps read about a controversy in uh, Montana where women legislators were encouraged to watch their necklines and hemlines. It made some of them mad. They felt they were being patronized. Well, I asked around about Arkansas and it turns out there was just such a lecture last week by an outgoing Republican legislator and at least a couple of women legislators again, didn't much take to being lectured about their clothing. They feel like they dress appropriately. Julie Mayberry, for example, a former TV anchor, said she wore a dress every week, every day last week. She sent her mother a picture and said, why, honey, you look just fine in that dress. She said, what's wrong with the dress? Why should I have to put on a coat to go down to the well of the house to speak? The rule is that men must wear a jacket at the well. That's where the lectern is and where you speak. And so they want women to look just like men by putting a jacket on. Stephanie Malone says, hey, a black jacket goes with anything. 
Among orientation activities last week by the legislature was also a session on social media. I don't think they got to the part where they said, hey, if you get your picture taken on the social media page, the rest of the world can see it. I've just been looking at a bunch of pictures of legislators enjoying themselves with free beer in the skyboxes at Verizon Arena for last week's Garth Brooks concert. Somehow, I don't think they paid the going rate to be in those high price, highfalutin skyboxes. So, fellas, remember, do right. And if you can't do right, don't get your face on Facebook. Somebody else might tell me about it. I'm Max Brandley. I'll be back tomorrow.